Oh, there it is. Hello, everyone. It's September 22nd. Do you know what that means? It means it's Thursday, and we're going to talk about some robot trading. So welcome. I have a little bit of bittersweetness to talk about this week. I want to talk about, well, I want to talk about what you like. And what you like can be a really sticky situation, hence the name of today's webinar. I don't love you, but I always will. And I always will. Let's see which one it is, because I took it straight from this song right here, from the Civil Wars. And if you know it, you might break out in tears. Check it out. Oh, my gosh, that's just stirring. And it's but I always will, so I'm going to change it right now. I did them wrong. <laughs> that song reminded me of what we're talking about today. And if you need a good cry and you're in a bad relationship, go ahead and check out Oh, Poison and Wine by the Civil Wars. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about this week. Let's get right to it. What do you like? You know me if you've been around, and this is all I would ask you if you were my tennis student. If you were my robot student, I would ask you the same. If you're a lifetime member, I'd ask you the same. If you just want to ask me questions off the street, I'd ask you the same thing. This is probably the 107th time you've seen that, 108 maybe now. Um, only 4,000 more times to go. I'm only going to say this actually about 4.6 million more times. You have to trade what you like. Do not gloss over this. Do not take it lightly. I am begging you. I This is gaining more and more importance to me seemingly by the day, maybe by the hour. The success in trading is trading what you like. Success on the tennis court is playing the way you like. Have I told you before? I've coached incredibly um, skilled athletic students that were trying to play the wrong way because somebody told them, hey, you should come to net or hey, you should play the baseline. Somebody told them they should play a way, play a certain way. I fixed all their strokes or helped them make their strokes pretty much error free. They've played the wrong way and failed even though everything is in their favor. Do you understand? You can find a trading system that works magnificently. Magnificently. It makes you all the money that you'd ever want. And guess what? It will not make you money if you do not like it. It doesn't matter in relationships. This person looks great on paper. They're from the right family. They're from the right, the right interests. If you don't like being with them, how does that relationship go? All right. You have to trade what you like. And to illustrate that, I offered you the great love hatred of my life, which is a currency pair. And to quote the Civil Wars, your mouth is poison, your mouth is wine. Oh, you remember the Civil Wars? They sang this, by the way. I mean, that's just that's just beautiful. That's just so incredibly beautiful. But the line actually right before that first chorus is, your mouth is poison, your mouth is wine. What does that mean? Because your mouth makes me feel like the greatest person in the world, and then your mouth also makes me feel like crud, okay? Here is the scourge of my trading life, okay? Now let's talk about this. This hits the nail on the head, so please ask questions, and I'll go back to it and check questions in a moment. Take a look at these stats, will you please? Here are the stats from 2004 through 2016, right now, through this month, through the current trade. From 2004 to 2016, there were no losing years. Get that? It's a day trading system. Every year was profitable, and not even barely profitable, profitable, right? A small to decent amount of money guaranteed every year. For how many years? It's 13 years right? 13 years. I say that because this is supposed to be 13. Thank you very much. Okay. Next stat, the winning percentage of this particular day trading system, this day trading robot, the win percentage is 67.9%, which is excellent, right? Even if you have an inverted risk to reward, meaning your profit target is smaller than your stop, your stop is 50 pips, your target is 20 pips, whatever it is. If you have a plus 60% winning percentage, almost always that type of thing will work. Okay, 
you can have an inverted risk to reward if your winning percentage is high. And guess what? It's almost 68%. That's fantastic. It's fantastic. This robot has 18 wins in a row at one point. Um, I hate to say it, but I think I may have seen it with my own eyes. I've seen at least 11 or 12 in a row with my own eyes that I can recall. Okay. And it's had in that 13 year period, it's won 18 times in a row. That's how streaky it is. That is awesome. You do not see day trading robots that win that much in a row. I'm just telling you, you can get your nice 8, 10, 11 win, uh, trade winning streaks. You can get those. No problem. 18 wins in a row is unbelievably good. I love you. I love you, robot. Well, at least so far. And the worst losing streak is only five. Are you telling me, talking to me, that this wins 18 times in a row and only loses five at the very worst? You telling me you can't handle that? I love this robot. I'm in love. I'm falling in love as I sit here and speak to you right now. Let's look at the profit with the smallest trade size. This is only 0.1 lot, 0.1 lots, a mini lot. This is nothing. This is just a tiny little thing. It still generates $7,773 in a max drawdown. The worst it's ever done is only $972, 13 years. Look at that. That's over 7 to 1, right? 7 to 1. We love 3 to 1. I mean, that that is really the discussion point for robots maybe even two to one is it is, is you can start the discussion for in a successful long-term robot five to one is really really nice anything above that is just phenomenal this is phenomenal numbers all right i went through earlier today preparing for this webinar and i did remember our 10k to a million please revert back to my blog by the way all of these are on my blog right now all the recordings all the blog posts Please go back. I want us all to have the same knowledge. But anyway, I don't make any money from that. I just want you to be informed. 10,000 turns into 255,000 in 13 years, right? It's 2004 to now. 10K turns into, well, what is that small K? I mean, I'm firing staff members today. 10K turns into two, 13 years. You know what that is per year? Now, this is compounding, right? This is raising the trade size as we go. But that's 30% per year. Do you know what 30% per year will give you? It make you the best trader in the world, the best portfolio trader in the world. And this is one robot. I mean, how could you not fall in love? Well, I'm going to make you fall in love more. Look at this equity curve, right? Tons of trades. Our sample size is fantastical, not a word. And it goes, what do we want from our equity curves? We want left to right in a 90 degree angle. Is that 90 degrees? I mean, go online and look at all the fake robot peddlers. Sorry. I'm sure they're not fake. I'm sure they're good people. But look at all the robot peddlers and look at that curve. You're telling me that curve won't match up to anywhere in the country, right? That's amazing. I love you. Then why do I call it the scourge? Because if you know me and you've been around, you've probably already guessed what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Aussie yen day trading robot. I love you, right? Previous page, absolutely adore you. Those stats match up to everything I want in a robot. When I set out on this robot path way back in 2012, after trading discretionarily from 2004, this is what I wanted. This is my dream. It trades a lot. It wins a lot. It's got a nice winning percentage. Its profit to drawdown ratio is excellent. Okay, On paper, easily, it's one of the top five robots I've ever, ever tested. And guess what? I haven't re-optimized it since 2013. That's when I built this thing. This was one of the original robots, I, day trading robots, I ever built. And you know what? I've tried to retest it, okay? I've tried to re-optimize it. And guess what? It can't be re-optimized. Nothing is better. It is the optimization, the testing has held up since 2013, and there are no settings that are better. I just tried again today, by the way. I tried again today, and there is no better way to trade this particular style, right? And personally, I've traded this. I've been live on the Aussie N on and off since 2013. Why on and off? Well, on because of this. Off because of um, this. Here is a recent trade. Now, full disclosure, I did not take this trade with my own money. I still, now I was trading the Aussie Yen all year long until this month, by the way. So I'm not giving you anything I haven't faced myself. 
it is a valuable part of a portfolio, by the way, right? Of course, it ruins portfolios sometimes too. However, I said I trade it on and off. Here's why it's off, okay? It determines a trend, right? Trend was up. Clearly, the trend was up right here. Clearly, right? And the short term, right? And this is a day trading robot. It's a 15-minute chart. All we want is short-term trends and get on board. Trend was up. It pulled back, which is what we love. Trading on pullbacks is way better in day trading than trading in breakouts, at least to my knowledge. And it immediately went up, but did not close out. So, oh, look, we're in profit. So it did its job. And then it immediately reversed on the very next bar. So we're out of profit. Hours later, let's see what time this was, by the way. This is 8 o'clock Eastern time. And then by 1030, it is a, a, in the toilet. Okay, it's way down. Okay. Not way down, but it's down. Oh, that's a roller coaster ride. Oh, by the way, I hate roller coasters. I hate drama. I hate roller coasters. I hate gossip. I hate it. And I hate this. <laughs> okay, just telling you. Hate's a strong word, but I hate it. All right. I love you, I, but I always will. No, I hate you, and I always will. Anyway, and then it came back, right, by 1230. So a few hours later, it's back. Okay, we're fine. It's right at itself. And then this happens, this inexorable journey downward, right? And once you get, the way this robot is built, once you get down, all you can do is hope that it comes back. That's it. But you're never going to make profit because that's the way it's designed. It's designed with a big stop. That's what gives you all those phenomenal numbers. But the downside of a big stop is once you get here, unless it moves in a hurry, you're never going to get back to profit. You're just trying to mitigate the loss. So. I spent, even though I didn't have real money on it, I spent all day looking at it like this. And I just got sadder and angrier and sadder and angrier and sadder and angrier. And then I broke and I woke up and it was out for a stop loss. Okay. I don't mind stop losses, right? I don't like them, but I can live with stop losses, right? This is 9-8-2016 and it stopped out at 9-9, nine, nine, right? That is over 24 hours of nothing but garbage, okay? I just can't do it. I'm, I'm not going to live my trading life for the rest of my life dealing with trades that 24 hours, all I get to look at is losing, right? I know how great it is. I've traded it and been a part of those winning streaks, but there's no way I'm going to go to work. I'm going to wake up in the morning, deal with that 8 a.m., deal with it all day, afternoon, evening, go to bed, wake up, deal with it again and then have it stop out, okay? So it goes back to the slide, right? Well, let's just fast forward this real quick. Oh, another loser, <laughs> isn't that nice? But there were, just to show you, oh, look at this, a couple, oh, three winners over there. Anyway, let's get back to the slides, okay? I can't trade like this. I want no part of that style of trading in my trading life. So even though it looks good, it doesn't matter if you hate it. I turned the robot off at the beginning of this month. I'm tired of it. Do I know it's going to do well? I mean, we never know anything, but I'm 99% sure this robot's going to turn around and go through a winning streak. I, I, just, I just know it in my bones, um, probably cynically because I'm not in it. But anyway, it doesn't matter to me. Right? It doesn't matter how great the good times are. For me, it only matters how bad the bad times are. I tell that to my students all the time, tennis-wise. I don't care about your good wins. I care about your worst day. I care about your worst day. What does your worst day look like? If your worst day is fine, you're set for life. If you can't stand the worst day, you're finished. If you can't stand the worst day with your partner, it's over. And I can't stand the worst day. I mean, that's the worst that robot can ever do. I can't stand it. All right. Now, when it's when it starts streaking again, it's going to be so easy to be lured back in. But I'm just saying, I don't love you anymore, but I always will love you because I love the way it streaks and I love the numbers on it. And I think it's a great robot. Now, if you're a different personality, guess what? If you like drama, if you like gossip, if you like action, this might be the way for you, okay? I'm just telling you, I'm giving you an example of my life so you can do the same. Not copy me, but you can make this own decision on your own. There are times when I've loved it, but I think I hate it. 
Remember that Howard Stern movie? He says, I, I think I quit. Well, I think I quit. Now, don't discriminate. Just because I hate that particular trading style, I hate the Aussie N, that doesn't mean that you should hate a, a certain currency pair permanently. Unless you're the dollar CAD, which I hate permanently. I hate it in all styles and trend following. I hate it. It's worthless. Go jump in a lake, dollar CAD. Sorry about that. Anyway, because of its aggressive nature, meaning big wins, big streaks, big turns, big losses, and by the way, it has positive carry. I didn't mention that, right? You trade it. I trade the Aussie N long only, and you get a lot of extra little rollover credit on that, by the way. It's nice. So because of its aggressive nature and its positive carry, its positive credit, I tested the Aussie N on a fair value methodology. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I talked about it in the blog post yesterday, but this is a 100% style, but it's trading back to fair value. The other 100% robot was not trading to fair value. That was a trend. Well, it was a go with the trend type of robot. All right, it wasn't a fair value robot. If you need more clarification, let me know, okay? Now, here are the stats on this particular robot, okay? There were 426 series of trades in the last 13 years, right? And, um, well, I'll, I'm going to tell you about it in a second, so just take the numbers. 426 series of trades. That means about almost 1,100 total trades because it does get into a new trade when you get into trouble. It takes a trade back to fair value. If the trade goes against or if it sets up again, it takes it again, okay? So there's more than that trade, but more than that many trades, but there's 426 series of trades. This is huge. I, I don't think you people appreciate it. <laughs> Sorry to call you you people, but I don't think anyone appreciates this number. 92.3% of those series close, profit, close profitably between or within 24 hours. Well said, Scott. Within 24 hours, 92% of those series of trades are over, and many are an hour, two hours, three hours. Do you appreciate how amazing that is? Think about that. 92% of your trades, every time you press the button, you win. And you win quickly, within that 24 hours. Okay? Think about that. But that's not all. 96.5% close profitably. Why can't I say that? Within three calendar days. So not three trading days. Three calendar days when I did this research. 96, almost 97%. So every time you press the button, the most you'll have to wait is three calendar days, and then you get more profit. Are you, are you getting this yet? I mean, this just is amazing to me. You get in a trade. Your robot takes it. You press the button, and 96% of the time, you're going to have a problem. All you got to do is wait three days, and you have a winner, and your account gets bigger. What, what do you do that's 96%, right? If you brush your teeth, do you hit your mouth 96% of the time? I mean, hopefully, right? I mean, what if 96% of the time you were first in line at the deli counter? Terrible example. What if 96% of the time the green light, the first green light to your, on your way to work was green or the first traffic light was green? I mean, if something is right 96% of the time, if 96% of the time you ask someone, a stranger off the street for money and they gave it to you, wouldn't that be awesome? I mean, it's just an unbelievable number. It's fantastic. But the last one is 98.6% close profitably, ha, within five calendar days. Five calendar days. So that's like if it's Thursday to Monday or whatever, right? Take out Saturday, it doesn't trade, whatever. So the robot takes a trade 98.6% of the time. They close profitably. Think about that, right? I told you this style of trading wins a lot. I mean, that is amazing. And, oh, by the way, it's the Aussie N. It's the Aussie N we talked about, right? Now, how does it trade? As, it, as I explained in the blog post yesterday, it waits for price to go on sale and then buys it back. And it only goes long. Why do we only go long? Because I find these 100% robots are better if you focus. If you're going long and short, you get into a lot of trouble. And it's way, way, way less profitable, at least according to my research. So I like buys, number one. And I like buys because I like to pick a direction. But I like buys, number two, because we get a little positive cheddar on top, right? 
So it waits for a price to go way down. So if you're looking at a chart, price will drop, 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 and then you buy. On the way back to fair value, it goes for a reachable small target. So it goes for little chunks, right? So you buy something for 50% off price, right? And you're just waiting for it to go back up to what it's worth, just the tiniest bit. That sort of combination is how you get those huge win rates. That's how you do it. Because you're buying it less. You're buying it way extreme. What are the chances you can sell it back? The chances are very, very good. They're 98.6% good within five calendar days, right? Furthermore, this robot tries to win every series. And according to the research, it actually does win every series. I don't know if it will. Nobody knows. But in this particular research, it wins every series. And as I said, most of them quickly, 92%, it's over in a few hours or 24 at the most. All right. So what is the downside? Well, that 1.4% of the time, because you're buying it on sale, you're buying it after it's gone down, guess what? The trend is down, and it keeps going down. Maybe we got in a little too early on this extreme move, and it goes against you. That's what happens the other 1.4% of the time. It just continues going down, 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 down. Now, in this robot style, what do we do? We just wait it out. That's what we do. There's not, I mean, first we try to get out of trouble, and if that's not successful, you just stop getting out of trouble and you wait. But time, so the theory goes, is on our side because it's eventually going to get back to fair value. We bought it on sale, right? So even if price goes against us the wrong way, we have fair value on our side. As opposed to buying in a trend, if that trend fails, how do we know it's ever coming back? I mean, how do we know anything? Of course, it's very philosophical. But I'm just saying when you buy, when you get into a trend, you determine the trend, get in on a pullback, or get in going in the direction of that trend, what if the trend turns and stays that way? We don't really have any assurances, at least philosophically, that it will go back. Well, this one, we feel like we have assurances. We have fair value, mathematically determined, as I talked about in my blog yesterday, up above us. So we just wait it out. And when we do that, only 1.4% of the time does that waiting period last over a week. I think there's only, in fact, there are six times, don't quote me on that, I can uh, show you the spreadsheet if you want, but we're getting late on time. I believe it's six times in 13 years the trade lasts longer than a week. Think about that. Six times in 13 years, not even every other year, do you have to worry about trade going longer. And I believe one of them did last three months, which, ugh, right? I understand. But most of them were not even a month, all right? And if you're interested in that sort of, I've given you a lot of numbers, so I just left that spreadsheet out. If you want more numbers, guess what you do? You email me, and I'll tell you, all right? But because a drawdown is $1,600 on those combined losing trades. That's the worst it ever did. And by the way, MT4 was only about 1,200, but on TradeStation it was 16, so let's say 16. This means you can't use a big trade size, right? This has a tiny trade size. As opposed to a robot with stops, we can jack up that trade size if it has stops, right? We know what our max loss is. This, we know what our max loss is, but it's way, way bigger, right? And we can't control it. So to be safer, you can't go for it as much. So if you use a small trade size, the max drawdown is 1,600. You can't just say, I mean, and this max trade size was like 10 times less. I hope I'm not confusing. I just got worried I confused you. The trade size, if you have a stop loss, can be about 10 times bigger than this because of this drawdown, because we don't have stops, okay? Hopefully that makes sense, and I'm going to get to questions in a moment. So because you can't use a big trade size and because that allows you to win all the time, right? So we control the drawdown and we win all the time, but we can't use a big trade size. 10K turns into 34K in 16 years, right? We did 10K to a million in under seven. 
We did last week on a trend following robot, 10K to 1.4 million in 12 years. This turns 10K into 34K in 16 years. You know what that is? It's like 7.8% or something like that per year, which is still great. It's still great. You'd still be one of the best hedge fund managers in the world if you made 7.8% every year for 16 years, right? But it's not that big a number, right? So what do you like? As I said, we know a robot with stop losses turns 10K into a million. And also in 12 years, it goes to 1.4 million, right? To reiterate, this robot doesn't come close. Hmm, do you see where we're going with this? What do you like? What do you like? What do you like? Three question marks. However, it wins all the time. 92% of the time, you're done in a day, in an hour, in 15 minutes. You're done. You're gonna, you turn this robot on or you trade this system and you win, 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 win. But you can't jack up that trade size safely. There are ways maybe we could work on it, but you're just asking for trouble right? How much is winning all the time worth to you? Would you rather go through a robot in a series of years, 10 years, seven years, where you go through losing streaks that have massive numbers, right? If you trade two full lots on a small $10,000 account and you see losses of like $500, that is difficult. What if you lose three in a row? Yikes! This one, you never lose a series of trades, according to the research, hypothetical research. Of course, everything's hypothetical. Don't make me say it every time, but I will. So how much is it worth it to you, though, to never have to go through that, to never have to go and say, oh, another trade. Oh, it stopped out. Oh, five, my account just went down. How much is it worth it to you to win all the time? Is it worth having less money? If so, 34000 is way better than this because you'll never make it. You're never going to make it to a million if you hate it. You'll never get there. This, you can get to 34 pretty reliably, pretty reliably. So think about it. What do you like? Now, are there solutions to the fact that it makes less money? Of course. You could trade more than one robot of this style and start building up your returns. Now, you start trading a bunch of robots. Here's what can happen. You can start making boatloads of money a day, 500 a day. 600 a day, 1,000 a day, 100 a day, if you're using small accounts, whatever. Why? Because you're going to win in the 90% of the time if you have a good robot, right? If you have robots that do this, and a lot of them do in this style, 90% of the time you're just going to be seeing your account go up. What happens that 1.4% of the time, though, if you're trading five of these? Is your drawdown 1,600? Is it 5,600? Is it 10,600? It's extraordinarily hard to know. We can do it. We can research it. But it's very difficult to pinpoint your max drawdown. Now, maybe you don't care. Maybe you want to trade a bunch of these and just say, I'm just going to bet. 90% of the time, I win anyway. I'm going to take that money and separate it out. Right? You can see we have a lot to discuss about trading this way. There are a lot of creative ways to trade when you're winning 92% of the time. Right? There's a lot we can do. But that's solution number one. Of course, part two is the more robots you use, the more disastrous drawdown brings into the equation, right? So think about that, right? Of course, it makes more money, but of course, it brings disastrous drawdown into the equation. And of course, um, part three is, like I said, you make profits so quickly, you could use a whole portfolio and then you'd be spending most of your time just watching your account go up. But if you do that, if you think 34 is not enough to so say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do more of these. You better have a plan for the bad times because you could lose it all. There's your poison and wine, right? Your mouth's like po poison, your mouth's like wine. 92% is like wine. The bad times, if you have six robots and they all go into drawdown, that is scary times. And you better have a detailed plan to get out, right? Poison and wine. But my last idea for today, and then I'm going to go to the questions, is you could use a robot as an account enhancer. Let's say you have one robot you're trading, five robots you're trading, 10 robots you're trading, and you want to just slide this robot in on the side, right? Small trade size. You know what the drawdown is? You got that extra little 7% juice on your account every year. Just a little 7% juice, right? You're not going to make your whole portfolio. You're not going to get to a million, 
but I could sure help myself get to a million if I slide this one in on the side. And that might be the most appealing thing because the others would take out a whole mess of research. Okay, let's take some questions and then I'll wrap it up. Darn it, I go over on these things. Why do I talk so much? I hate my talking. Hopefully you don't hate it. All right, here we go. Questions coming in. Um, a Talon, by the way, I missed you earlier. Um, let me see. Andrew says, okay. Uh, try to keep that going in the future. Absolutely. Is this a new robot? Um, yes, this is my other new 100% robot. Yes, sir, indeed. Ulrich says, trades on what pair? Ha, ha, I think I answered that. Andrew says, how often do you raise the trade size? Any amount you want. I did a blog post on raising it and um, lessening your drawdown as you go, or you can just raise it. You know, if I go up 5%, I raise it 5%. If I, my account goes up 10%, I raise my trade size 10%. Something simple like that. I got a little more complicated in a previous blog post. If you're interested, um, go through my blog or email me, and I'll link it to you. All right, next. How often do you raise trade size? That's what we just did. Doug says, no. I assume that means because I was talking about the Aussie yen. I, <laughs> Doug says, I will never trade that beast again. Well, you know how I feel. Quit watching it. I I can't stop watching it, Doug, though. I can't. I can't. I watch it even if I'm not trading. I watch it every day. Poison and wine, I'm telling you. Andrew says, I'll take these stats anytime. I And again, other people would. This, you know, there are some people, I've talked to traders that this sort of losing doesn't bother them at all. Like, they would laugh at me. They would think I'm the weakest, loserest person on earth. So I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying the way it is. Uh, he's still in a trade from Euro from a month ago. Yeah, some people, it's not a big deal, right? Some people just love that. Now, Nimmer in the TF, of TFL fame loves being in down, right? Rob is great at it too. I, I'm just not. I don't like it. Uh, I had to let her go. She was too hot to handle. Yeah, I, I agree. Does it add to positions when it's going against you? Yes. Was the trade size in your example? Um, one mini lot. Let's make this work on a few more pairs. Well, it works on a few more pairs, Douglas, but the drawdown is bigger. So I've got a few more tested, but anyway, we can discuss. All right, um, those are the questions I have. Let's wrap it up. Bottom line in all of this is get the proper research. Do your data crunching, all right, or have someone like me do it for you. You have to have good data so you know. If you don't know what your max drawdown is, you're just asking for a margin call, so be careful. But once you do the research, choosing what you like is equally important. Do you get it? Do you see how important it is? You'll never get to a million if you hate it. You'll never get to a 10% return if you hate it. You have to love coming to the computer every day. You have to love it even when you lose, right? I've had students that when they lose, I get excited. I can't wait to meet with them, figure out what was wrong, and conquer it. I've had many students. It was so rewarding to go through the tough times. It was so awesome in a weird way. To say, okay, we took a tough loss today. Here's how we're going to win the next time. And then to win the next time, I'll never forget that. Always gives me goosebumps the many times that that's happened. I can think of many examples right now. But I've also had students where every time you lose, it's awful. It's World War III, and they just got blown up. It's Armageddon. Their parents are upset. They're crying. They'll never get better again. It's awful. If you can't take the losing, if you don't like the losing and how to bounce back, you'll never make it. All right? If you like the odd occasions that you're in this drawdown, if you don't mind being in a drawdown, which most of the time you won't be, but for a long time, if you don't mind the potential of being in a drawdown for a couple months, this type of robot is awesome. But if you don't like being in a trade for weeks, then please steer clear. Please don't try to trade. Just a side example, I got an email the other day from someone trading a trend following portfolio, and they're watching it every month, every month, every month. Why isn't this going up, right? Trend following is not for you. If you're looking at trades every day or every month, trend following is awful for you. Just another example of what we talked about today. Trend following is you check in in a year. You check in in five years, right? You do not look at monthly returns on a trend following portfolio. You're trading something you hate, and it will not be successful for you. Same thing as you're trading the Aussie yen if you can't stand drawdowns and stopouts. It's never going to work. Trend following works if you are in it for five, ten-year periods. If you can't stand it, don't trade trend following. Do you see what I'm saying? If you can't take drawdowns, don't trade the Aussie end. If you can't take stop outs, don't trade that. If you like looking at it every day, don't trend follow, and so on and so forth. You want the losing to feel like wine, too. You don't want to be on a roller coaster with your trading, and I cannot stress that enough. 
I've begun work quickly, and again, we're over. Uh, I've begun work on the System of the Month Club. I'll talk more about it, but I'm going to bring out, I have at least six offerings, things that I'm super excited about. Uh, I'll probably make more. What I'll do is instead of talking about it on a webinar and then never letting you hear about it again or never giving you access, I'll give you access to it. Um, I'll make it cheap, uh, and I'll tell you all about it. Um, these are six new ones. Lifetime members, obviously, will get it all for free. They'll get the course for free. They'll get all the robots for free if they want them. I think lifetime members will be pleased with the new ones I'm coming out with. Um, they may or may not want to trade up for what they already have. They already have some good ones, I think, right, ones that I trade, but I'm pretty excited about what's coming out. So if you're a lifetime member, you just get everything. But for six months, I just want to quit talking about it and then not giving you access. I want to give you a chance to trade robots if you want to. So that's what's coming up. I'll talk more about it. I wish we weren't over time. Um, and, and I'll slip this in, by the, by the way. The lifetime membership may be going away soon. Um, I, I've really enjoyed it so far, but I don't want it to get too big for me to handle. I don't want to be a full-time customer service rep, and I don't want to not give service. It's a very tricky situation. So it might be going away soon, just letting you know. Um, but right now, there are still a few slots available. All right, so just there's your marketing update. Uh, I'm also working on a new version of an old robot. That'll be out soon. Hopefully, uh, Wes is working on it as we speak. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please, please, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want everyone to get the information. Uh, obviously, I don't really make money off YouTube. I just want us all to be on the same page. All right, that is all for now. Sorry to go so long. I get so excited. Uh, we'll be back next week with a blog post and a webinar. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.